Today we're going to be taking apart this BT Open Reach thing. Um, what I think this is, because this is actually given to me by someone else, but what I think it is, is I think it's a backup battery um, for people who have fibre to the premises because you don't get any electricity coming in with that on the phone line like you normally do with a normal phone line. So I think this provides the emergency power or the power to run normal phones off of fibre to the premises system. So without further ado, let's take it apart. Now I've already actually tried getting this thing apart uh, before, but uh, it's very resistant. It's got these clips down down here and I couldn't get them out at all basically uh, so I'm gonna have to resort to Mr. Dremel so this might be quite loud I'll try and duck the audio um, when I go to edit this but yeah let's see if we can get it apart Okay, I need to lever a bit apart with a screwdriver. This might do it, I might need to do a bit more cutting or this might be enough. Well, it's certainly put together well, I'll give it that. I was hoping to reuse this case, but uh, there's no chance of that. I don't think these things are really designed to be uh, serviced by the looks of it. Right, I'm just going to cut a little bit more off. Aha! Wow! Those are some big ass caps in that. So that basically looks like pretty much exactly what I thought it would look like. So in there I would imagine there's a boost converter. Uh, to take the output from the batteries, which in this case would be 6 volts, and boost it up to, I think it's 48 volts for a phone ring. And there's some nice, uh, nice coils in there, lovely big capacitors. I might hook it up to my power supply and just see, just see what it outputs. I don't think there's any point in getting too much into the electronics of this, but... I think I can see some, there's definitely a MOSFET there. A couple more MOSFETs there as well. And actually some, there's another one there. I don't think that one's a MOSFET, but I'm not entirely sure. There's a little buzzer, I'm guessing that's if power goes or something. I don't really know an awful lot about these. Looks like there's a little fuse down there. And up here... That looks like a thermistor, so I'm guessing it's checking for battery, the battery's getting too hot or something. Very, very weird. Yes, yeah, so we've got a couple of really nice big 25 volt, 680 microfarad caps in there. I'm definitely going to be having those off the board. There's a 220, 25, um, another 220, 25. Some sort of a crystal here. What is that? A 3.6, 3.6, I guess, megahertz crystal. So maybe it's got some sort of microprocessor with it. I don't know, there's a little chip down, down there. Well, it's quite near that chip, and I can see a couple of, they look like LEDs, but they should be H1 and H2. Hmm. See, normally those would be uh, capacitors, so that's interesting. But I think it's probably time to put a little bit of power in this thing. I mainly took this apart because, you know, I was interested in what was inside it, and I thought maybe there might be a few other people that that were interested. But yeah, it's basically, I'm guessing, just a 48 volt uh, boost converter. So I think I'm going to feed it some uh, feed some electricity from the power supply and uh, see what we can measure out the other side of it. Let's do that now. I'm going to set my power supply to 6 volts and just 
hook it up on here. So that one is a B plus. See if we can get my clip on there. And this one is B minus. There's no buzzing or light. Oh, are those status LEDs maybe? It's drawing 30 milliamps. It's not really doing anything at the moment. It's interesting there's no status lights uh, coming on on it. That is most odd, but it might need to be plugged into the actual system itself. Uh, I'm going to stick a multimeter across it and see if there's anything coming out of that DC, the DC plug. Let's just measure if there's any voltage coming, coming out of it. Okay, there's 12 volts coming out of it. That's interesting. So there's 5.9 going in, and there's 12 volts going out. Ah, now on the front I can see there's a little thing here that says charging, so maybe it's designed to take rechargeable batteries. That would kind of make a lot of sense. I think I do have a set of rechargeables, so I wonder whether it's worth me. I'm going to... Um, Put some rechargeable batteries in there and just see what it does. See if we can get it to uh, to charge. So one in that way, one in that way, like that, and like that. Hmm. So I wonder if we still have a voltage on here. Yes, we've still got our 12 volts on there. So that's quite a nice little 12 volt boost converter. If nothing else. I kind of like the look of that. I think I'm going to have to take it out of here and just see if I can feed... Um, I don't know what's supposed to go in here, actually. DC in. Well, that's handy, isn't it? DC in, DC out. Well, we could try feeding... 12 volts into it, couldn't we? What could possibly go wrong? Let's set the meter for 12 volts. <coughs> meter, power supply. I'm going to set the power supply for 12 volts. Let's unhook all these here. And I need to hook this up to the minus rail, so that can go there. If I can get it on there. And it happens if I put that on. Okay. So we have a fault light, but I'm not too worried about that. No charging light, though. So the status is green, whatever that means. The fault is, well, it has a fault. Um, now it might well be that it won't charge unless it's plugged into the system it's supposed to be plugged into. And there is another lead that goes in here, which goes into the um, fiber to the premises box. But I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this to charge. And that also answers the question about what those components down here were, they're not actually capacitors, they, uh, they're actually the status LEDs, so the capacitors must be somewhere else. And I can't see them immediately, but I'm sure they're there somewhere. I don't really know what, what else to say about this, really. I don't think I can get it to charge those batteries. It's a nice little unit as a boost converter, but i got so many of those anyway, and I doubt it's going to be very high current, although, although you know, those, those coils are, are lumpy. They are really lumpy. They've got to be, God, I don't know, they've got to be like 10 amps or something like that. They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty chunky. I think I might have to have them out. Um, you can never have too many of those, and those 
I mean, I don't think I've ever seen surface mount electrolytic capacitors that big. But I don't think this really has a use uh, beyond, you know, what it's actually designed for. It's certainly not designed to be dismantled. Uh, but what a shame, because that would have made a really nice project box for something, but that's not happening now. I've now taken the circuit board out of the unit so we can have a bit of a closer look at what's actually on here. Um, up here, we have a couple of MOSFETs and they are 4407As. I've used these before in projects myself. Uh, they're just fairly generic um, Chinese MOSFETs. Down here, we've got a couple of 6609As. Now these, again, definitely look like MOSFETs. You can tell because of the, the ganged up pins here, the four there, uh, the three over here, and then the one there to drive it. Uh, but I couldn't really find anything out um, about those at all. So I'm not really sure what they are. I'm guessing they're probably five amp, six amp MOSFETs, something like that. And over here we have another 4407A. I will definitely be taking uh, these off because these are really useful. You can use them in all sorts of uh, situations. They're good substitutes for some of the uh, more expensive uh, MOSFETs. Up here we have a BD836. Now I couldn't find anything online about that at all. So I have no idea what that actually is. And down here, we have a, what's marked as a BG453. Again, not absolutely sure what that is. The closest I could find to it said it was a 2 amp boost converter. Well, kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much um, all the electronics that's on the top side of any, of any import. But what's actually really interesting is what's on the bottom side. On the bottom side, we have a microchip uh, PIC 16F887 controller. That's very nice to see. And now we can see what the crystal was actually connected to. And there's the two capacitors that we were expecting on that crystal. So again, that is definitely coming off. I can reuse that. Over here, we have a MAX232. And that is an RS232 to TTL converter. And that kind of seems to go over here. So I just wonder whether this interface here is actually a serial interface going into the main fiber to the premises box. Up here, we have a MCP619, and that is just a quad op amp. So that will be involved with uh, voltage monitoring, maybe uh, battery voltage monitoring, certainly line voltage monitoring. But it would be quite interesting to see um, if we can actually get an output on that and just see if it's outputting plain text or something like that. And down here, we've got what looks like a programming header for the chip. All the lines seem to go straight up into the PIC chip. So I'm guessing that's just how they uh, either program it in the factory or update the firmware if they need to do that. So there's quite a lot going on uh, on the bottom of the board with regards processing power. That's a uh, nice little PIC microprocessor. I'm very pleased to see a microchip processor on the bottom of this board. I was expecting an 8051 sort of generic Chinese, you know, unmarked, label scrubbed off sort of thing. So really, really pleased to see that. The board itself looks really nice quality. Um, you can't really fault it, to be honest with you. And, you know, just as uh, basically a battery backup monitoring sort of thing, it's a really nice bit of kit. Like I say, it's basically just... I'm guessing a 48 volt boost converter and a little 12 volt output, which again is presumably for the fiber to the premises box. That's probably what keeps that going during a power cut. Um, that's it really. Any questions, uh, put them in the comments, but this thing is gonna be uh, dismantled a bit further. I'm gonna take all the components that I want off of it and then it's going in a bin. Thank you for watching this video. There'll be another one coming soon. I have designed a Rombo Redux ROM board, uh, which is basically a clone of the original Rombo ROM board for the Amstrad CPC. And I will be doing a video on that in the next week or so. Thank you for watching this video. Cheers. Bye-bye.